Hey friends, what's happening? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the study strategies and the tricks that I developed while studying for the GAMSAT over the past year. Hopefully at the end of the video, you guys can pick up a little bit of knowledge to maximize your potential to ace the exam on the day and ultimately get into medicine. Let's get into it. All right, so I've studied the GAMSAT twice. My first time was in September last year and my most recent time was just a month ago in March. In my September sitting, I only had about a month, maybe a month and a half to study before the day, mainly because I wasn't entirely sure if medicine was the career that I actually wanted to pursue. I actually ended up scoring 59 on that test, which honestly, <laughs> to me was like just incredible. Like I had no idea that I was gonna score anywhere remotely that score, let alone, you know, actually be within a competitive chance, as, you know, from my point of view anyway. So my second time round that I came through, I knew that I had like one, two, three, four months to prepare so I could organize a clear cut framework to essentially make sure that I maximized my potential to actually do well and succeed on the GAMSAT come March this year. So for those about four or so months, I studied for about five hours every day, like Monday through Friday, pretty consistently throughout. <laughs> like. In no way was I diligent and robotic and like every single day did that pinpoint word for word exactly how I'd written it out on my schedule, you know, because like that's crazy, like who does that? But so I most definitely had days off, like I had little gaps, like I gave myself a rest, I gave myself a break because that's that's just so important, like you have to, otherwise you're just going to get burnt out and you're not going to, you're not going to be able to perform at your best come test day. Ultimately, I really enjoyed the GAMSAT overall process. I love the studying. I love the test. I think it's so unique in the way that it can test you on so many different aspects of like mental cognition in such a short space of time. Like it's, I, to me, I find it very, very interesting and a very worthwhile test to take. And I think that's the key really to just enjoy the process, to just make the most of it. Like the test itself is so fascinating the way it tests you. And I think actually enjoying it and consciously being happy to undergo the steps involved to be able to do well and perform on the day is the biggest difference in my opinion between performing well and performing poorly on the day. So without further ado, let's get into the four, five points that I think are the most important for preparing yourself to do well on the day of the GAMSAT when it comes around. So let's get into it. Point one, don't stress, okay? I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to cut yourself a little bit of slack, okay? Now, I know that's easier said than done, and from my perspective, it's pretty easy to say that having been on the other side of the hump and the study and the preparation and the completion of the test. But honestly, chronic stress is one of the biggest contributing factors to students performing poorly in like examinations and tests and really anything to do with increased cognitive load. Okay, now I know acute stress can actually be beneficial in times of increased load to a human being and the body at a certain point. Okay, like in this study by Schneiderman and et al, they found that in acute stress, the body has an increase of catecholamines and cortisol, which actually promote glycogen conversion into glucose, as well as the breakdown of fat for energy use within the body. Now, although this is a seemingly beneficial physiological response at a time, right? Over time, it causes detrimental effects on the body. And we have to remember that sitting the GAMSAT is a marathon, not a sprint. Therefore, we need to balance this out. Otherwise, we're just going to overload our body and we're going to start to break down and not be able to perform at our optimum peak when we need to on test day. Complementing this fact, in the same study, they conducted a meta-analysis over 30 years following students showing that during times of intermediate stresses, such as academic examinations, students actually showed a skew in their T helper 2 cells, suppressing their cellular immunity. This then corresponded with an increased incidence of illness amongst the students, all producing symptoms of general fatigue, malaise, decreased feelings of overall well-being, which are all synonymous with depression. Now, funnily enough, 
the same pro-inflammatory cytokines produced during these depressive episodes are also seen during periods of prolonged chronic stress. So guys, I cannot emphasize the importance of just giving yourself a break, okay? Moving on. Point two, keep track of your progress throughout the practice exams leading up to the test state of the actual test. Now, it's really crucial to not only understand why you're getting questions wrong, but to also go through the questions you're getting right and sit down and actually try and figure out the logic behind what led you to the conclusion that got you the correct answer. Because it's so important during the exam and while studying to actually get a grasp on how ACER wants you to actually derive a conclusion from their preset logic within the questions given to you. So what I actually found really useful is that I went through all the questions and I wrote, wrote them out, you know, ticks, got them right, got them wrong, whatever, tallied it up and I'd move on to the next test. And I did all the tests and then I went back to the start and I went through all the wrong answers again. And by this time, maybe, maybe it'd been what, a couple weeks, maybe it'd been a month. But by, by the end, I wasn't 100% sure what the correct answer was for the questions that I'd gotten wrong in that first test that I originally sat. So that gave me a chance to either A, try and tackle it again and see if I could understand the question, or B, recognize that I don't know what I'm doing and I need to revise and I need to learn this topic so that I can tackle it again in a month's time or in a couple of weeks or whenever and see if I can grasp an understanding to actually come to a conclusion or at least have a bit more of an idea of what's actually going on. See, I found this constant revising of going back to the first questions that I'd started, then trying to knuckle and figure out the questions I got wrong, to then revising the theory if I didn't get it, and then going back again, actually helps to reinforce like this the neural connections in my brain that actually gave me the ability or the you know the cognitive thought processes to be able to tackle the games at questions and how ASA want us to think, while also supplementing that with a little bit of theory and concept knowledge that is also just as beneficial when it comes to these questions on the day. Point three, play to your strengths. Now, this one sounds pretty simple, but I think a lot of people get hung up on this idea of, um, oh, you know, I have to, I have to knuckle down, I have to study every single section, I have to be perfect, I have to be flawless, like I have to aim for that 65 in every single section otherwise you know I'm just never going to have a chance to get in and I'm not going to I'm not going to get the overall score I want and I'm not going to get into medicine <laughs> like that's not that like that that's not the case that you can take a much more relaxed approach like if you know that section 1 is your strongest subject and you're really good at that language comprehension don't put as much time into it you don't need to drill all your hours into that look back and go, hmm, I think I need to work on my science and work on your science and build that up because certain sections can carry another section. If you're only getting a 55 in um, like section three, but then in section one, because you're so good at it, you're getting like a 70, like that balances out and you're going to get like, you know, that overall base in your section two, you'll get that overall 62 or whatever, which is enough to get you in. For example, I came from a massive science background. So I knew all my organic chemistry, you know, my physics, my maths, my graphs, my bio, I was pretty on top of that. But I've never been good at essay writing and I was just been absolutely awful at it. So what I did was that I actually made a conscious effort to, st to write out an essay once a week for the months leading up to the exam and it made a huge difference. My section three was, you know, okay, it was pretty average, but my section two carried me in my first attempt and hopefully in my second attempt when I get the results in a couple of weeks too. So I think it's really important to break your study up into point into sections where you know is a really crucial area that you need to study for and areas that aren't that important that you can kind of let let you know sit a little bit and just keep in the back of your head and just refresh without heavily going into the study because it overall just made me less stressed and I felt more confident being able to put more energy into an area that I knew was going to be more high yield and more beneficial for me leading up to the day and actually on the day when I sat it. Point four. Now this really complements what we've just been talking about, but it's really, really important to actually learn how you learn. 
Like if you're a visual learner, you know, go out there, bust out those mind maps, make those spider diagrams to really cluster together all of those theories and concepts that you think are important to help you ace that question that you're really struggling with. Then, you know, chuck them into some flashcards in Anki to really help consolidate and learn that knowledge. Now, YouTube videos are really good if you do like to have someone teach you and really see something laid out in a different perspective, and that's great. But keep in mind that that's passive, not active learning. And I've got a video coming up explaining that later on in the future. For example, I'm a very visual learner, right? Like, I need to see things written down. I need to grasp it right in front of me with pictures, with funny little people, with, like, anything. Like, it can be a really basic concept, but I need that in a graphical nature for me to actually comprehend the concept of what it's talking about. Like... In the GAMSA, I'll be looking at some language comprehension thing and it'll have me try and derive some association between these, you know, complex diagrams or whatever. And for me, it really helps to just, you know, write it out myself in different format, in a different structure or different symbols. And even though the information there is still the same, because I've written it out in a form factor that my brain can more easily recognize, it allows me to process that information in a quicker, more timely, and a much simpler manner so that I can properly understand the information that's being told to me regardless of how it's being presented. Now this all really ties into that whole tackling a GAMSAT question situation because as I'm sure you know, the GAMSAT really is looking to try and make you understand and process complex information in a time poor environment. So it's really crucial to actually develop strategies that allow you to break down that information in a efficient, simple manner that you know you're going to be able to come back to and refer to over the course of the question and actually understand and recognize what the question is talking about, what they're asking you, and how to find the correct answer. Point five, final point guys. Biggest and most important thing I can tell you guys is to listen to yourself and take a break if you need to. Studying four, five, six, seven, eight hours a day for X amount of months, you know, it's just not sustainable. It's not conducive to cultivating an environment where you thrive and you're actually happy and looking forward to doing the work you need to do, but also putting yourself in the right mindset where you know that you're going to get something out of it and it's going to be a beneficial studying experience for you during the day. The last thing you want to do is burn yourself out the week before the game sat and then when you've done all this prep and all this study on the day, you are just so mentally fatigued and physically exhausted that you just can't perform to the absolute best that you want to and ultimately you let yourself down. If you need to, take that time off. All right, take that day off, take that week off in between, wherever you need it, just to make sure that you're not overexerting yourself and then after that little break, however long it is, you can come back feeling refreshed, feeling energized and ready to tackle and learn some new content. Like what I did for both of my studies was I studied pretty hard leading up to the tests, but that last week, the week just before the test, I did absolutely nothing. I threw my books away and I'm pretty sure I spent the whole time on this computer right here just playing video games until the night before where I had a good night's sleep and a good rest before going in and, hope, and doing the best that I could on the day. It's so important to look after yourself both mentally and physically throughout this time. You don't cut off your social network, you still see your friends, still see your family, you still be a, like, a functioning human being, you know? I mean, it's only a test, you know? It's a big test, but it's only a test. It does not define who you are as a person. So cut yourself a little bit of slack. If you don't get the results you want, whether you've sat it one, two, three, four times, you know, sit it again in a couple months. Go again, because if you're dedicated, you will eventually get the score you need and get into medicine and fulfill that dream. So to give you guys a bit of advice, if you're not quite getting those results you're after, use the time in between sittings to really hone in on the reasons why and perhaps even how you're not getting the results that you think you probably could be or the results that you want. So use the tips and tricks in this video and see if you can really take that time to hone in on and change the way that you're approaching questions and changing the way that you're approaching prompts in an essay and structuring your paragraphs in order to make a point. And hopefully you can make that change and see the differences required to get you the scores that you're really hoping to get into med. 
So at the end of the day, guys, I know it's daunting, and the game set itself is an overall exhausting, grueling, and really unforgiving process. But no other exam tests you on this level. So, you know, really get excited about it, you know? Take it as an opportunity to learn more about yourself, and also as an opportunity to grow as a person and really try and develop that drive to want to learn more and want to develop yourself as you prepare for essentially a lifelong career in learning. All right, that's it for today, guys. I really hope you've learned something from this video or at least given you the motivation to keep studying or allowed you the freedom to recognize that it's okay to take a couple days off and not put so much pressure on yourself. If you got something out of this video or you're really keen for more, please hit that like and subscribe button down there because it really does make a big difference to me and the channel and I really genuinely appreciate it. If you're keen for similar videos like this or you want me to cover a specific topic, please leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to definitely check it out. Oh, until next time guys, peace.